Today is Wednesday, June 4, 2014, the 155th day of the year. There are 210 days remaining until the end of 2014. Sunrise this morning was at 5.12 a.m. The sun will set at 8.28 p.m. Length of daylight hours today will be 15 hours, 16 minutes. Of visible light, 16 hours, 27 minutes. Tomorrow's daylight will persist one minute, six seconds longer than today. The waxing crescent moon, six days old with 37% illumination, rises at 11.37 a.m. and will set at 12.18 a.m. Thursday. The moon passes today above Rutland City at 251,247 miles distant from the center of planet Earth, appearing within the fifth zodiacal designation, Leo the Lion. Under mostly sunny skies in downtown Rutland, expect a high temperature of 76 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale with light west wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour and 20% chance of rain. Tonight, partly to mostly cloudy with a 20% chance of rainfall, low 53 degrees, light south wind, five to 10 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high temperature around 67 degrees, and light north, northeast wind, five to 10 miles per hour. Pollen count today is moderate, six out of 12. Humidity is high, holding steady around 88%. UV level is low, one out of 16. Air quality is, take the time today to try some of this. Honestly, you won't regret it, and it just might do you some good. Highest temperature in the contiguous United States on Tuesday is 109 degrees at Death Valley in the Golden State, California, and at El Paso, Texas, the Lone Star State. The lowest temperature, 25 degrees at Mammoth Lakes, California. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. Newser.com reports technophobes may be alarmed to learn that new sperm-like robots could be performing many activities, including fertilizing human eggs. Researchers say the tiny bots dubbed magnetosperm were inspired by the shape and movement of sperm cells and can swim to their targets with incredible accuracy, Live Science reports. They believe the sperm bots could be useful in nano manufacturing as well as for medical uses, including unclogging arteries, drug administration, and in vitro fertilization. The robots have a metal head and a body of flexible polymer and steered through a field produced by electromagnetic coils. The magnetic head is used to orient it in a certain direction and then just by flapping its tail, it starts to move forward, the lead researcher explains to the BBC. The flapping happens because we change the current in the coils, he says, predicting that the tiny bots will prove useful where it's necessary to reach precise locations. Well, I haven't seen you for a while, and I guess I was wondering what happened to you and what you've been up to. Very exciting news. I've taken a new day job. Oh, congrats. You like it? Yes. Well, unlike this job, you cheap bastard. Ha, ha, ha. That's a joke, son. They pay me. Actually, not a great deal, but the perks are unbelievable. Really? Good benefits? The usual. Health care. Paid holidays. Hot lunch. These new robots are still a lot slower and around six times bigger than human sperm, but the magnetosperm team says it's working on creating smaller, faster versions. I'm adaptable. I can write a faster program. I can miniaturize. A miniaturization program. Our hurricane naming system taps into an unconscious sexism and the results are potentially disastrous, researchers say. A study suggests that when we hear a female name for a hurricane, we're less worried, and thus less likely to prepare adequately than we would if the name were male, the Washington Post reports. These findings suggest the value of considering a new system for hurricane naming to reduce the influence of biases on hurricane risk assessment, researchers write. Experts reviewed the 47 most damaging hurricanes between 1950, when naming began, and 2012, they found that hurricanes with female names killed an average of 45 people, while those with male names killed an average of 23. In surveys, respondents expected more intensity from hurricanes with male names, while people imagining a female hurricane were not as willing to seek shelter, says researcher Sharon Shavit. Some journalists asked Shavit whether the study was a joke, she tells the Los Angeles Times. No, it now appears, she said, and this is a paraphrase, that gender biases apply not only to people, but also to fearsome, unstoppable, enormously destructive weather systems. This is today's Weather Minute. I'm Richard Alcott.